Welcome to the pop-up frame card set tutorial featuring our P.S. I Love You paper collection. I'm Shari Philomahala here at the Graphic 45 headquarters and today I'm going to teach you how to take our card bases and turn them into these fun interactive pop-up cards. Our P.S. I Love You cards are volume eight. We're going to be creating these super fun frame pop-up cards. They've got a dimension on the front as well as on the inside. You can see there's a lot going on. We've got stamping and some fun pop-ups um, going on here as well. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through not only these two cards, but also this third one here. I'm going to teach you how to do them step by step, including the stamping and the splatter ink techniques. And then I'll show you with your leftover supplies, the other three cards that you can create. These cards have been created for us by Nancy Wethington. And Nancy is really going over the top, teaching us new fabulous techniques that can be reused on all your paper crafting projects. So if you want to get this kit to follow along, you can do that on our website at g45papers.com or go down to your local Graphic 45 retailer. The PS I Love You card kit comes with the 8x8 collection pack with 24 of these gorgeous double-sided sheets. You're going to get our classic black hybrid ink pad as well as some ivory card bases. You get six envelopes and six card bases. And then our gorgeous PS I Love You stamps with so many great sentiments. Do all things with love. P.S. I love you always and forever. And then of course the project sheet. Now grab those products or you can use what you've got at home and follow along with the step-by-step -step tutorial. So the first thing we want to do for our card one is take happily ever after. And we're going to trim this down to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Then on the back side with a ruler and a pencil, you're going to mark one and a half inches from the top and one and a half inches from the bottom. And then you'll mark one inch from both the left and right hand sides. And take your paper trimmer or an X-Acto knife and then cut those out. Now we're going to grab this you and me paper and we've cut this to be a three and a quarter by five inches and then we've marked this and we've marked it one inch from the top and one inch from the bottom and then we've marked it three quarters of an inch from both the uh, left and right hand side. And go ahead and trim out your center rectangle. Like so. And not to worry if you have any visible pencil lines because we have this gorgeous classic black ink in your kit and we can just ink up our edges to hide any of that. And then we'll do the same with our black frame as well. We gotta love black ink. It gives you that nice defining line between your layers and it also hides any imperfections that you may have in your cutting or hides that white core, just really making things pop. Next, we're gonna take your card bases. You may either get them like this where they're already pre-scored to be a five by seven or they might uh, come as a uh, seven by 10. And Either way, we just want to cut this right down the center so we have two five by seven pieces. Like so. So I just replaced my blade or rather used a sharper paper trimmer and have those nice crisp edges and I have two five by seven pieces here. So let's do a little practice splatter techniques. So I'm just gonna take my ink pad and this is just the plastic packaging from my 8x8. Just some old printer paper. And I'm just gonna practice my splattering. I've gotten a 
paintbrush with a little bit of water on it. And now I'm going to soak that up and then just practice my splattering techniques. So you can see I have uh, two different sizes of splatters that I've now created. Let's go ahead and try that one more time just to make sure we have this technique down before we start it on our card bases. So just get a good layer of black on my packaging. Take a, just any old paintbrush will do and soak up some of that ink for finer splatters we're just going to flick with our fingernail and for our larger splatters we want more water on our brush and then tap downward all right i think that we have it so let's go ahead and try this on our card base so if I didn't want any of this area to uh, be splattered, then I could go ahead and mask off certain areas that I wanted to protect. I could do that with scrap paper or masking tape. Um, since only a little bit of this will be showing, I am not gonna mind if it is actually splattered and I'm gonna ink up the edges in the end anyway. So I think it will be fun if a little bit is showing through. So added a little more water in here, grab my ink pad and ink up my packaging. So I want to stamp my sentiment on the center of where we did our markings. So I'm kind of avoiding that area as a whole. Now that I have less water on here, I'm going to do my finer splatters. Looking good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry. This would be a great time to batch these. So you could do all six of your card bases you could cut all of them down to uh, the two five by sevens and then splatter one of those. And then once you're done, go ahead and clean up your surface. So we've got our stamp on our stamp block and I'm gonna take these two frames that I cut out and use a bit of a washi tape to keep them in place. And then this one goes on top of this. I'm not going to adhere these down just yet because we're gonna be adding some dimensional foam adhesive behind these, so just making sure I like the placement of these. And now I'm gonna take my classic black ink pad and my love stamp from the PS I Love You stamps. Make sure that you're nice and inked up. And this is gonna go right in the center. Beautiful. And since we already have our paintbrush out, I have most of my water off there already, and I'm just gonna kind of paint in where my O isn't as strong as I want it to be. Of course, if you have one of those uh, stamp presses, that would work beautiful to go back, but this is nice and easy for this simple job and then clean off your stamp. Using some foam adhesive or uh, leftover uh, cardboard or whatever you want to get that extra dimension, add those to your frames. So I've got my first frame down and now we'll just do the same with our second frame. So just adding the extra dimension. Of course, if you wanna pop this in the mail and you don't want all that extra um, foam tape, you can just uh, omit this step as well. And I forgot to add that little inked edge. So I went back through and just did a tiny bit of inking to the edge by dabbing away. And then we're just gonna do a bit of fussy cutting 
I've just taken the scraps from this Happily Ever After paper that we cut out and I'm going to cut some out of there. And maybe butt up this flat edge with our flat edge here. So cute. And also from here, let's just cut out two of these stamps. And then adhere your pieces down. I take some of those scrap borders left over from our cut apart page and trim those to fit on our frame. And voila, we have completed the front panel. Step four, we're gonna cut this piece of you and me to be eight inches by six and a quarter. Now let's do a little bit of scoring. On the eight inch side, we are gonna score at three inches, four inches, and five inches. Go ahead and crease that in half on that four inch score line. Now we're gonna do a little bit of marking. So we are going to, we have this folded on in half and then we're going to take our ruler and on that three inch score line here we are going to mark two inches from the top and four and a quarter inches also from the top and we're going to take that mark and we're going to go all the way down and then we are going to take this mark a half of an inch across the top and the bottom and then down again so we have a nice little rectangle like this. Just adding my new blade in here so I'm going to get a nice crisp cut. This is my uh, paper trimmer that I can drop my blade where I would like to. If you don't have one of these you're just going to want to pull out your X-Acto knife and ruler. But you already have your ruler out but and we're just going to trim both layers of our card on our marked spots. So we've cut on all those lines and now you can see we have two windows on both sides of our card. So let's stitch these cards back together. So I've got my front and my back of my card and I'm going to open these up like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and ink this one to match this one. Looking gorgeous. Oopsie doodles, I found an easier way to do that and I was adhering that on the wrong side. So let's cut these papers again. Alrighty, so I cut this piece again and I've inked my edges and now I know I want my flower side upright. And we are just going to adhere one side at a time. So I do not want to add adhesive to our center V here, but I do want this center to match the edge of our paper, making sure our paper is right side up. So just keeping all of that in mind while I'm adding my adhesive. Okay, so I've got my adhesive, but now I want our edge to be flush with this. So double checking one last time that I have everything right side up. We're gonna find our center point, find your perfect placement, and then go ahead and adhere this down. And now we're gonna do the same with this other side. So we'll only be adding adhesive to this three inch section but now we want this to be flush here and so I'm just going to square up my card bases with each other like so. Once you like your placement everything's looking good we can go ahead and burnish this down. I want my center to pop like this and have my sides nice and beautifully adhered down. So step six, we've cut and scored our piece of happily ever after. This piece is cut to eight inches by two and a quarter. And then we've gone ahead and we've scored this at a quarter of an inch. 
at one and a half, at four inches, six and a half, and seven and three quarters. And fold on all those score lines so you end up with, I guess it's kind of a, an interesting M shape with your quarter of an inch folds going downward. All right, now that we've got it all creased, we can thread this through our inside card base like so, through our window. Of course, if you need to trim it up a little bit, go ahead and do so, but mine's fitting beautifully. And then I'm gonna add some adhesive onto our quarter inch fold down pieces. So I want this to fold straight across and nice and flat. So I'm just gonna do one at a time, making sure that they are even. So now that I've done one, I'll do the other. So you can see how all these fun folds are starting to come together. Now all we have left to do is the fun stuff and that's decorating the inside. So of course you can take it from here and do it however you'd like, or you can follow my examples. We're gonna do some fun stamping on these two pieces. So we have just cut some strips to be three quarters of an inch by six and a quarter. We have two of those and then we've taken a scrap piece of this you and me. So first up, I'm gonna stamp you and me on our scratch paper we've got left over to add a little sentiment to the inside. Beautiful. Now I've lined up these two stamps. I've got the XO and our little heart flourish. Adding some decoration to these little leftovers. Like so, and I'll do the same with my other. And there you have it. We have completed our card number one. Just added our border strips to the sides and then dolled up our little pop-ups with a little few fussy cuts, a nice little sentiment down here. You can see Nancy popped her sentiment up there, so let me know, do you like it popped up here? You like it flat down there? Show us uh, the cards you're creating along with us also on Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag. And then with that same stamp setup, you can see you can just add a little bit of uh, stamping to your envelopes and some scrap papers. Card two, we are going to be taking our romantic reverie and we've cut it to four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Now we've done that same technique where we've cut out the center an inch and a half from the top and bottom and an inch from both the right and left. Now we've got our scent with love paper and we have cut this to be three and a quarter by five inches. And we'll be doing our frame technique here as well where we're cutting three quarters of an inch from the sides and an inch from the bottom. Voila. So with this card, I'm not gonna be inking up those edges. I wanna leave these ones a little on the crisp side and see how we like, which ones we like better. I'm just putting my frames in place so I can stamp and know exactly where I want this to go. And then I'm gonna take this always and forever stamp and stamp this right in the center. I'm loving this stamp set. It is all killer and no filler. So, so much fun to work with with these cards. And then finding that nice, perfect placement. Add your foam adhesive and let's pop up our frames. So I'm just going to grab my two ends. Voila, I am going to pop this right on top. And of course, I added my adhesive on the stamp side rather than the floral side. But lucky for me, 
all Graphic 45 papers in a collection work extremely well together, so it still looks beautiful. You can see Nancy's sample here with the white flowers just popping on top. So you do it however you want to do it. We're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting to decorate these cards. So I've taken my two largest ones from the PS I Love You signature paper and then just one of those stamps. And we are just going to arrange this using some foam adhesives, however you like best. And then for my sample, I'm actually going to keep it on the simpler side since that's what we're going for with this one and just add my flower fussy cut piece down here. And what do you think? Do you like it more ornate or on the more simple side? I really like it both ways. Using the signature page of PS I Love You, we're gonna cut this piece to be eight inches by six and a quarter. And then we are gonna do our same scoring that we did on card one at score at three, four, and five inches. Fold a half on four. And we'll do that same window technique that we did before. So on our three inch line, we are marking from two inches to four and a quarter. And then we're gonna go over a half of an inch and mark again from two to four and a quarter. And just bring that across, making our nice little window. And of course, we're gonna cut that out. And then we've cut out our little window spaces and we'll have our nice little card insert like this. So now I have a card base just, you know, the bottom, and then we've got our top, and we can start to adhere this on, making sure I'm doing everything right side up and on the right side this time. So I'm gonna add my adhesive to this three inch section. And then folding this in half, so I've got the full four inches, just no adhesive on that one inch we are going to adhere this center flush with the right side. Our card base is looking like this. And then do the same here. This time it's even easier. We can just kind of lay this flat and then match up our card bottom and top to one another, making sure everything is staying nice inside and flush. Step six, we've taken Romantic Reverie that's been cut to eight inches by two and a quarter. And we're gonna score these just like we did before. So at a quarter of an inch, one and a half, four inches, six and a half, and seven and three quarters. Fold so your piece looks like this. And mine is just slightly too big, so I'm gonna just trim it down just a tiny bit so everything slides in more smoothly like so. Just adding adhesive to that quarter inch section on both the left and right hand side that folds under. Next we're going to do some stamping on some ivory cardstock and then fussy cut that out and use those as our embellishments just as a fun way to show you other ways to use these. But of course, if you don't have the ivory cardstock in your stash, you could always uh, use any leftover card bases that you have or use uh, whatever coordinating cardstock you do have in your stash. So I'm going to stamp a few of these roses. And then let's do a few sentiments. You know, if you have a full sheet like I do here, it's a great time where you could just do 
a whole page of stamps and then use those for all your cards and for any other future P.S. I love you or romantic projects that you want to be doing. And while we have everything out, let's go ahead and do a little bit of shading with our roses. So I've got a little water in my dish. So what do you think? We have one shaded and two not shaded. Do you have a preference? I'm kind of liking the shading. I think you can do so much with these ink pads and really have a lot of fun. And then we're just gonna fussy cut out our roses. Alrighty, so now we've done our stamping and we've cut out some border strips. We've got two pieces from Romantic Reverie that are a half of an inch by six and a quarter and two decorative strips um, from P.S. I Love You that are also six and a quarter. And there you have it. This is how I've decorated up the inside of my stamped beautiful Do All Things With Love card. And you can see Nancy did things a little differently with hers. so. Just giving you a few options on how you want to fill up yours so we have finished card number two you can see we've got the simple version and the more amped up fun version love to see all the creative ways you can put these supplies together and your stamping and inking techniques and then here's what nancy has done with the envelope just doubling that up with a stamp and a, a cut apart and some more borders on the back. For card number three, I'm trying some more splattering techniques throughout the whole card. And I've even uh, just put a little scrap here as a mask and then added some more uh, splattering around there so when I do my stamping it'll really stand out and then I've also just uh, added some splatters to the other sides of our card as well so for step one for card three we're taking key to my heart that's been cut to four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then we're cutting out our frame like we have in our first two cards for step two, we're going to take key to my heart again and cut it to three and a quarter by five inches. And then we're going to cut out our frame just like we did with uh, cards one and two. Now I'm just adding my cut frames to my front of my card base that I've already added my splatters to. And we're going to do our stamping. Add your stamp. Add your foam adhesive to your frames and adhere those on. And now I've taken these two cute cut aparts. I've just fussy cut out this blossom and it's gonna go right here in our bottom corner. And then I love you to the moon and back. I've added some foam adhesive on this bad boy and it's gonna go, you can put it at the top on a, a straight across or you could do it like Nancy has done it and add it to a diagonal. I think I'm gonna go straight across so we can see how it looks both ways. Super cute. Using our Happily Ever After paper, we've cut this to be eight inches by six and a quarter. And we're gonna score this again at three inches, four inches, and five inches on that eight inch side. 
make your marks again from two inches to two four and a quarter and then a half of an inch over and make that rectangle and then we're going to go ahead and cut out our windows adhere to the inside just like we did before we've taken this piece of key to my heart that's eight inches by two and a quarter and we're going to do those scores just like we have four on a quarter of an inch one and a half inches four inches six and a half and seven and three quarters fold on those score lines adhere into place do a little more stamping or fussy cutting however you want to decorate this but we're going to be doing a combination of stamps and fussy cuts so There we go. We have completed our card number three for the PS I Love You card set. Do you like the splatters? Do you like the stamping? We'd love to hear your comments. And then this is what you can do with your stamps and your envelopes and those leftover bits. Now to create this card with your leftovers, you're gonna see we're gonna be using our Scent With Love for both of those frames. We've got some cut aparts from our PS I Love You signature page. Do all things with love stamped in the center. And then on the inside, we've got Always and Forever featured as our main uh, back piece. It's more borders, stamps, and our scent with love again. Here's what else you can create. We've got our Always and Forever in the background as our main frame and Hello Darling as our top frame, some cut aparts. On the inside, we've got Hello Darling featured as well here and here. And for that last card, we've got Romantic Reverie for our frames, cut aparts. And this one doesn't feature any of that splash work. So if you wanna see it nice and crisp and clean, here is a great example. And then on the inside, you can see Nancy's done some stamping on some of our uh, lighter colored papers. And then we've used Hello Darling for both pieces here as well as some cut aparts, but love all these great stamping and inking techniques. Way to go, Nancy, for another set of beautiful cards. So did you have a favorite of the card set? Did you have a favorite stamping or inking technique? Let us know in the comments below. And then be sure to share your uh, cards on our Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag. We thank you for joining us for this fabulous video. If you're looking for more great projects like this one, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell so you know every time we upload a new fun and fabulous project. Thank you for joining us and as always, happy paper crafting.